ahead and call the hearing to order. So um, just for folks' awareness, we're first holding our um, uh, uh, hearing to consider adoption of revisions to the Braintree Town Plan. This hearing is a uh, required step in the process to um, consider adoption of the revisions to the town plan as they have been recommended to us by the Planning Commission following their public process that they went through in accordance with Vermont state law to amend the town plan. And um, the purpose of this hearing is to take a uh, comment, which we will record. <laughs> Hold on. Sorry. Uh, sorry. <clears throat> Um, and folks were also invited to submit written comments. If you have any written comments, we will also be happy to um, take those from you. Um, we did invite folks to submit written comments uh, prior to the hearing. It's my understanding from Janice as of earlier today that we received no written comments in advance of the hearing. Um, so I think with that, um, I would welcome any members of the Planning Commission that are here and are interested to speak about the, um, the process that you went through in revising the town plan. Um, since there are members of the Planning Commission here, I'm reluctant to speak on behalf of them um, since they were so much more involved um, and put a lot of time into this process than the select board has. Um, so I'll open that up first. Sure, uh, I'm Jackson Evans uh, from the Planning Commission. This was a process that crossed six years and one pandemic and <laughs> um, many, many hours of deliberation and revision and tossing out of old versions and bringing in new ones. Um, we worked very closely with Two Rivers, Autopeachy Regional Commission on um, crafting this to help, you know, they kind of help form a shell and we filled in the uh, various sections. Um, I think it represents, you know, uh, a, a good plan for the next eight years in the country's um, process. The next, the next step is that the planning commission will begin and has begun on is rewriting the zoning bylaws. So the town plan informs the zoning bylaw, which comes next. Um, so I don't know, Paul, if you want to add. No, I, I, I think uh, in our deliberations, uh, we, we try to be as clear in our own minds about uh, where the town of Braintree uh, fits within our local economy and within, within our region, uh, uh, and to uh, uh, have a plan reflect uh, its, its current role as opposed to its historical, although there is some overlap there. And also to reflect and to incorporate a number of uh, elements that are now statewide uh, in terms of both legislation and, and uh, uh, priority uh, for the state uh, in terms of housing, in terms of conservation, in terms of resiliency, uh, having to do with uh, climate change and, and, and uh, more frequent and bigger storms, uh, new kind of thing. Um, and we felt uh, uh, very good about the way in which we were able to, to sensitively, in many ways, uh, incorporate all those elements, uh, recognizing that sometimes one element uh, can cause some tension with another element, uh, uh, The goals are not always mutually exclusive. They, they are dependent upon each other and some degree of balance uh, is, is, is required. Um, so at, at that point, I think I'll, I'll stop and we can answer questions, I think, yeah, if there are any. Sure. Um, well, I just want to start by saying thank you so much for all of your work. Um, I know it, it did um, take a lot of years and a lot of your time, um, and we really appreciate all of that work that you put into it. So greatly appreciate that. Um, so with that, I'm happy to open the floor for um, comments or uh, questions of the members of the commission that are here. Janice. How much import have you had? Have you reviewed this? We you were accepting this as it is? We have, that's correct. Okay. 
Yes, please. Uh, my name is Lou Helmuth. Um, I live on Boulder Road. Um, I thank you also for um, <laughs> many years of, uh, uh, that, that went into this, uh, during which I did not participate. <laughs> so I am here at this last moment. And my question um, may be one that's inappropriate at this time, and I'm happy to hear that if that's the case. Um, it relates to the references in the town plan to sourcing gravel. Um, and there are several references in the town plan to a preference for in-town gravel. And I'm just wondering why there's a preference for in-town gravel stated in the town plan. That's a really good question. Um, <coughs> it, so part of the process of, that, of creating this town plan was, was using the bones of the existing town plan. And that may have been a piece that we hung on to from the previous town plan. I, I don't. I don't recall specifically having that conversation about including the preference, preferential piece. You know, why, wouldn't you, why wouldn't you prefer it in house? Well, I, I think that you, you would prefer it if it made economic and, and ecological sense to do so. Uh, I mean, there are lots of places where there are gravel in this town where it's not going to get, like in out of rivers, out of riverbanks. Uh, and uh, this has been a a um, recurring issue for the town uh, of what do you do about where you can get gravel uh, and where is it available uh, and where is it economically available. Um, uh, and so I think there would normally be if you know if it was even Stephen on all your options and one was local and one wasn't the shop to go there. But I don't think the planning commission really had any conversation around. So I think that's just something for the select board to think about. There are preferences stated in there, and I agree with you 100%, Paul, that there, there might be a preference for that if there is economical advantage to the town and ecological and, and other uh, acceptance of and, and uh, compliance with other components of the town plan. Um, but it does appear to my reading that there is a, a preference stated without recognition mm -hmm. to that balancing. Okay. Thank you, Lou. Thank you. Yes, Chris. State of emergency, you can go down and dig in the river anytime you want. Get the gravel. In a state of emergency. It's a state of emergency, statewide. All the bloods come off. <laughs> If your truck runs and you can put it on the road, do it. I believe I could jump behind the wheel without a CDL, but I'm not quite sure. <laughs> yeah, well, while these days these events seem to be becoming the rule instead of the exception, I think we still have to be prudent and plan for normal operation and outside of state of emergency. But we spend a lot of those these days. <laughs> Any other comments or questions? Yes. You know why? I see two other contradictions. One is reducing the fossil fuel, and now you're going to run your north field, and how much fossil fuel are you increasing? And the other one was um, recommending not giving up town trails and class four roads. Was that, it? sorry, was Janice? Not giving up. Is Quiet. that a, a separate comment or in relation to the it's sourcing of the material? The oh, right. Yeah. Okay. So it no. sounds like you're in favor of sourcing material pursuant to what the town plan. Well, I read this through and I could see those three things as a contradiction to what you're practicing. So with the with the roads and the trails, where is the contradiction there? This recommends not giving up class four roads or trails. All right, and we haven't. No, but you've got to find your warning. That's well, a reclassification. There's re no discontinuance of roads. No, we're yeah, we're going to keep it and we're going to, you know, shift it to either a trail or. But it's a reclassification, oh, not a. Not the a road stays, it just changes class. Yeah. Okay. Well, I didn't realize that at the last meeting. Yeah. 
I'm sorry, which road are we talking about? Um, we've been, this is a conversation that's, that's been happening outside of the context of the town plan, um, but at our regular select board meetings, um, we've been talking about reclassification of Duclo Road, uh, a specific portion of it, not the whole road, and then Wilson Road. It's not in the town plan. Yeah. Well, it's independent of the town plan. I think it, the plan here has some really significant features that are commendable. Um, one is bravery has some really important natural resources in the mud pond watershed area. Um, and c compared to some of the neighborhood, um, neighboring towns, percentages of um, protection, it sounds like we have some really important resources here. And it's nice to see them called out in such a strong way. So I just like it. Thank the commission. Thank you. And would you mind just stating your name for the recording? Oh, Juliet Robbins. Thank you very much. Thank you. Right. Any other comments before we close the comment portion? I have a question. Yes, Annie. So can written comments be submitted at? This hearing? Um, we were welcoming them up until the hearing. I'll note that on our select board agenda, we do have uh, the item under new business to adopt the town plan uh, or to consider that question during our, our meeting okay. in 13 minutes. <laughs> and then we go through the process going forward in terms of approval or no hearing or nope, this, this is it um so uh there's been a uh the planning commission had their statutorily required hearing several months ago they then kind of sent the town plan to the select board in june and at that point in time we considered it as a board and decided that we were comfortable with the town plan written as is as recommended by the planning commission um, to hold this hearing, um, and uh, here we are. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, I have a question. What would you consider, in quick summary fashion, are the biggest changes moving forward? Would it be conservation or housing, or you know, could you just spell that out for me? Sure, I definitely defer to Jackson and Paul to weigh in on that, since you had the, you know, the. The pen. Yeah. <laughs> no, okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's kind of it. Um, I mean, housing was a big housing, energy. You know, those were some of the bigger things that we focused on. I think having gone through a pandemic while writing this, it was a real eye opener in terms of what's going to happen in the next decade with in migration from. You know, we we saw property selling very quickly in Braintree, and so. You know, that's probably not going to stop. So thinking about how we use our, how land use reflects housing was a really big um, thing that we were keeping an eye on. Flooding too, I mean, we spent a lot of time talking about flood resiliency and, and mm -hmm. the challenge is we don't have new flood maps. And so, you know, we know it's coming. FEMA hasn't mapped us. And so yeah. there's not a lot, we were kind of hamstrung in that regard. We couldn't, there's not a lot of planning you can do without official maps. So. I mean, I think housing, energy, environmental issues, and conservation were sort of And as I said earlier, I think there's always a question of how you balance all of those things. Um, because each one has, if taken to an extreme, it undercuts the others. So you can't. We, we try to be judicious, <laughs> we try to be solemn and that. And am I correct in saying that the implementation matrix was a new feature of the plan this year? Yes, definitely. Yeah. And that was to, that was to allow all the participants who right. are called upon to actually do something to make mm -hmm. the plan real. Yeah. To call to their attention what is their role going forward. Yeah. And so that's that's the section five at yeah. the end that chart. So that if you're on the select board, you can go down and you can see what we're really expecting yeah. the select board to do. Uh, or the Conservation Commission, or, or you know, and so forth. Yeah. Uh, 
that was as you know I I'm a bureaucrat for my day job so that was the section I was the most excited about to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> it's just really nice when someone is just like here here's what you need to do go do it <laughs> I like that. so yeah I, I appreciate that addition <clears throat> Hey, it's yeah. not a comment on the town plan other than to say thanks for all the time and the years you put into it. It's more of a process question. Uh, so when is it finalized and when then do bylaws, new zoning bylaws, take shape? And how different do you anticipate they'll be from previous bylaws based on the differences in town plans? I mean, that's the, the process. You know, we, we sort of need the town plan to be approved. So we know what the guardrails are within which to create these bylaws. So we started the process of talking to Two Rivers, looking at grants to help pay for this work because it's pretty intensive. It's not; it's very technical work. Um, you know, so we're looking at options for working with either Two Rivers or another consulting agency to help us craft the bylaws. But they'll basically be informed by what the town plan is, is showing, and I think we'll more or less use the existing bylaw as maybe a, a starting framework, but um, in terms of how heavily they're going to be changed, I, I'm not sure. I think there's definitely no some of the weak areas in our bylaws, and we know some of the new uh, some of the new things in the town plan that will require new bylaws, so those are kind of starting points. But I mean, the process itself, I mean, we'll, it's a couple of years probably. Yeah. I think there are two things that may amplify on that. Um, the process is first to have the town plan adopted, and, and then that gives us a degree of guidance uh, in terms of going forward with the drafting of, or the redrafting of the, uh, uh, the zoning uh, ordinance. Um, the zoning ordinance is a very technical document, which, which Jackson said, and uh, it's it's not only technical, but it's very detailed, and it and it has to all work together. And so the the conversation that we've had within the planning commission is that this is a task that we really need some technical help on. Okay, and so that means uh, whether it's uh, two rivers or it's an independent uh, 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 consultant, um, it's coming across money. And uh, so one of the issues around that is uh, we have uh, considered applying to the state, there are a couple of potential grant opportunities that this town uh, there's uh, state programs that could underwrite uh, the bulk of, of that expense. The window for applying for those grants is limited. It, it closes later this fall, like in in November, or beginning of November or beginning of December. So if we don't have the plan in place, we can't apply for the grants. If we don't have the plan in place and we don't apply for the grants, then we basically lose a year waiting for the next window of opportunity to apply for grants. All right. So I think that's something in terms of the process and the timing that's, uh, uh, that's, that's very important. Uh, the second comment I would make is that there have also been uh, new uh, legislation at the state level, both in terms of uh, uh, energy and in terms of housing. And so we need to make sure, while we have reflected those objectives in the plan, we now have to figure out a way to reflect those and incorporate those into the actual zoning ordinance. Uh, and that's another technical piece, but which is significantly different from the current zoning ordinance, which did not anticipate. There are a bunch of smaller things, that administrative and, and clarifying and definitional and so forth. But I think the, the real lift here is going to be how we incorporate uh, some of the housing requirements and some of the uh, energy and, and uh, efficiency uh, requirements of the state. All right, um, and I just want to note that um, Kyle from Two Rivers is online or on the phone, and just Kyle wanted to give you an opportunity to say anything you might want to weigh in with. If not, that's fine. Hi, everyone. Kyle Katz at uh, Two Rivers Auto Regional Commission. Um, I'm just here to answer any process or 
Uh, process questions related to the, to the town plan hearing. Um, and I, I know there was one question um, a few minutes ago on you know, when the plan becomes effective. And it's effective immediately upon adoption. Um, so once it's adopted, that is the plan. Obviously, there will be technical things like putting in the adoption date on the title um, and putting the adoption plan, uh, date on the maps as well. Um, but yes, once the plan is adopted, that is the, the town plan. Thanks, Kyle. Yep. All right. Any any other comments before we wrap up? Okay. Um, with that, I'll make a motion that we close the hearing. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye.